Richard Leonard Kukinski, also known as the Mafia Iceman, was the second of four children born to Stanley and Anna Kukinski, and they were of Polish origin. Richard was born on April 11th, 1935, in Jersey City, New Jersey. Stanley Kukinski worked at a railroad as a brakeman. He was also said to have been an alcoholic who regularly abused his wife and children. Anna Kukinski, meanwhile, worked at a meat processing plant. She was a very strict mother and a devout Catholic. She was also known to beat Richard often. When Richard was about five years old, his older brother, Florian, was killed by his own father during one of the many beatings that he would lash out. When Stanley realized that he had killed his son, he had ordered his wife to call the hospital and tell them Florian had accidentally fallen down the stairs and had hit his head. Eventually, Stanley left his family, and Richard was left to fend for himself. By 16, he was already known to have an explosive temper and a willingness to kill. Richard first killed in 1948. At the age of 13, he had beaten up Charlie Lane, a leader of a small gang of teenagers known as the Project Boys, who had been bullying him for a very long time. When Charlie had lashed out a particularly bad beating to Richard, he decided to seek out revenge. He attacked Charlie Lane with a thick wooden dowel and beat him to death with it. He denied wanting to kill Lane, but either way, Charlie never opened his eyes again. After Richard realized that he was dead, he dumped Lane's body off of a bridge in South Jersey after removing all of his teeth and chopping off his fingertips with a hatchet as an attempt to prevent police from identifying the body. The body was never found. After Richard killed Charlie Lane, he went to look for the other boys in the gang. He got a meat pole from the trash can and beat all of them nearly to death. In an HBO documentary called Iceman Confessions, a mafia hitman, that was released in 1992, Richard admitted that after he had killed Charlie, he learned that it was better to give than receive. After living his early childhood being on the receiving end of countless beatings and abuse. When he finally killed Charlie Lane, it opened up a whole new world to him that he could be the one that gives the beatings instead of being the beaten. According to his own statements, he would hurt somebody just for making him feel bad about anything. His number one pet peeve was loud-mouthed people, as he put it. They reminded him of his father. He also admitted that he used to torture and kill animals such as cats and dogs.
eventually, he ended up associated with a Gambino crime family through a relationship with a mobster named Roy DeMeo. In the beginning, Richard started doing small robberies and other assignments for the family, one of which was pirating porno tapes and making bootlegs. But after the mob realized Richard had a talent, a knack, if you will, for murder and killing, he eventually put him to the test. One day, DeMeo took Richard out of his car and they parked on a city street. DeMeo then randomly selected a person from the crowd, a man who was out walking his dog. He told Richard to kill him without even questioning the order from Roy. Richard got out, walked towards the man, and shot him in the back of the head. After that, Richard became Roy DeMeo's favorite enforcer, and over the next 30 plus years, Richard killed numerous people by gun, strangulation, knife, poison, you name it. Although no one knows officially how many people Richard had killed, it's claimed to be between 33 and upwards of a possible 200 individuals. According to Richard himself, his favorite way to kill was cyanide. Because as he put it, it killed quickly and was hard to detect on a toxicology test. He found many ways to use the poison. He'd put it in food. Inject it accidentally spill it on a victim's skin and even put it in an aerosol spray can. And how would he dispose of a body? Well, he said that his favorite method was putting it in a 55-gallon oil drum. But that's not the only way that he would get rid of bodies. He's claimed that he'd left them sitting on park benches on more than one occasion, leaving them in junkyards, putting them in trunks of cars, burying them, and in some cases, entirely dismembering them. After all this killing, he, of course, got a name for himself. Originally, his nickname was the Polak, because he was Polish and the rest of his associates were Italian. But he did eventually get his famous nickname, The Iceman, because he started freezing corpses in an industrial freezer. He even claimed that he used a Mr. Softy's ice cream truck for this purpose, Although, the police and FBI doubt this claim. When the authorities finally caught up to Robert Kukinski in 1986, they based their case almost entirely on the testimony of an undercover agent. The agent, a New Jersey State Police detective, was following this case for six years. The bureau agent had acted like he wanted to hire Kukinski for a hit and recorded him speaking in detail about what he would do and how he would do it. In the process of doing so, Mrs. Kukinski was also arrested and charged with gun possession because the car was in fact registered under her name. When Mrs. Kukinski was arrested, the police officer put his boot on her back while detaining her, 
and this enraged Kakinski in a way that they needed multiple officers just to bring him down. In 1988, the New Jersey court convicted him of five murders and sentenced him to consecutive life sentences, making him eligible for parole at the age of 110. In 2003, he had pleaded guilty to the murder of a police detective, and they gave him another 30 years. In an interview, Kukinski claimed that he would never kill a child and he would most likely never kill a woman. He also confessed that once he wanted to use a crossbow to carry out a hit, but not without testing it first. While driving his car, a random man headed for his direction had been shot in the forehead with a crossbow and Richard said that the arrow only made it about halfway through his head. He also admitted to multiple kidnappings. But in April of 2006, Kikinski died at the age of 70 at 1.15 a.m. March 5th, 2006. He was in a secure wing at the medical center in Trenton, New Jersey at the time. He was scheduled to testify that former Gambino crime family boss, Sammy Gravano, had ordered him to murder the New York police detective. He had admitted to murdering Calibro with a shotgun on the night of March 14th, 1980. Even after his death in March of 2006, more murders carried out by him were starting to be uncovered. In April, just a month after his death, people had found out that Robert Kukinski had confessed that he was part of a group that murdered a famed union boss named Jimby Hoffa, even though in earlier HBO interviews he completely denied the fact. Who knows if more murders will be uncovered that were carried out by this man, the Iceman. Only time will tell. Ghouls, it has been a hot minute since I got to do like a true crime video thing because YouTube likes to demonetize the poop out of them. So we'll see if they demonetize this or not. But I really wanted to make one of these, especially like these mafia ones are so interesting. And there's like such a big difference between the police are like he murdered between 33 and freaking 200 people. Like that's a big jump. That's like 150 plus difference of people murdered by this man. But yeah, I saw this actually. I saw a, like a really small picture. You know how sometimes on Facebook they have like a picture of the guy and like a brief little synopsis of what he's done. And I saw that in like my news feed and I was like, oh shit, I want to research that. So I researched it for like five hours one day and I found it so interesting. I watched like the documentary and stuff on him. And I figured you ghouls would enjoy it. Some good true crime spookiness. A little bit of a difference of creepypastas and stuff. But I know a lot of you ghouls were recommending doing more true crime stuff. So if you ghouls like this, let me know in the comments below. But as always, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.